This is Coogan Cassius for Eiffel TV. We're in Glasgow here for the press conference to announce uh, the Scotland show on the 27th of June, fighting on the bill defending his British title. Curtis Woodhouse. Hello, Curtis. Coogan, hi, Paul. All right? Yeah, I'm good, man. I haven't spoke to you for a little while, have I? No, you've not. Last not. time I spoke to you, you were a retired fighter. Yeah, um, you um, don't really mess around with those domestic fighters anymore, you know, jet setting over in America with Floyd Mayweathers and the big hitters. It's just nice that you can spend a little bit of time with us normal people. So, if I don't spend any time with domestic fighters, as you say, what the fuck am I doing here now? Eddie must be paying you a lot of money. <laughs> Should we talk about getting paid a lot of money? Yeah, that's why I'm not retired, mate. <laughs> uh, um, let's go back. Obviously, uh, the last time I actually did speak to you was um, in the dressing room yeah. after the Hamilton fight. And uh, uh, listen, regardless of where you are now, it was an emotional night uh, in all. But you, you did decide to call it a day. Um, apart from the obvious, the hunger, the, the the financial reward, let's not mess about. Why did you decide to come back? I pretty much knew, I'd probably say a couple of days after the after the Hamilton fight, that it, it was going to be impossible for me to walk away. Um, just the euphoria I was feeling of, of being the champion and then obviously the phone rings and I'm starting to get offers here, there and everywhere and I've had some really exciting fights and then the opportunity to come to, to Scotland and fight Willie Lemon for his Commonwealth title and I'm the British champion and putting both belts on the line and you know it's just these things that are going through my mind now if I walked away and when I said I was going to walk away after that I'd, I'd just have a, so many what ifs oh, I wonder if I could have beaten Willie Lemon you know could I have maybe became British and Commonwealth champion and it's like anything you get greedy don't you you're never you're never you're never happy with what you've got um, so yeah, so I've got greedy, simple as that. Um, I want to know how far I can go. Um, and I believe after winning the title, you know, you, you, you look at a lot of fighters and when they win a title, they become better fighters. You know, because now I've got the pressure off me of becoming British champion and it, it was nagging away at me because of the promise I'd made to my dad. And now all that's gone, you know, I can relax now and, and enjoy my boxing and enjoy my performances a little bit more. So I, I believe that you're going to see the best of me now. That's what I'm hoping. But like you said, with the desire and things like that, you know, I love to sit here in, in front of you and say, yeah, it's definitely going to be there 100%. I'm going to be the same fighter, have the same amount of hunger. But until you get put in that position where you're asked serious questions in a fight, you never know. And I'm just like every other fighter, you know, I can't promise you that I'm going to have it in me to dig deep again. I've already achieved what I wanted to achieve. I think I'm going to have it. But until you're put there, you can never 100% say. So. Who knows? Let's find out. Would you agree that, despite what happens from now onwards in your future, that that memory of you lifting the British title will can't be tarnished, can it? Whatever happens, that's always going to be there for you to look back on, to say that you've accomplished that. If you go on and pick up the Commonwealth and whatever else, then that's just an added bonus, surely. Yeah, a hundred percent. Everything else now is a bonus. You know, the mission when I first put the gloves on was to become British champion. And no matter what happens in the rest of my career, February the twenty second will always be the pinnacle. You know, and that, and that's what I was fighting with with myself. You know, everything I do now is never going to be it's never going to be the same as that. You know, but it's like Man United they don't play Man City every day, but it don't mean they stop playing. You know, there's still other big challenges out there for me. But February twenty second will always be the pinnacle. Those ne that'll never get topped to me ever, no matter whatever happens in my career. So I have the choice of. Do I walk away and, and, and that be that or or do I carry on going and try and achieve other things, you know, and I've, de I've decided to do the latter, you know, there's still loads loads out there for me to do and like I said, I didn't turn professional until I was 26, I'm still a young man in boxing terms, you know, I've only been doing it 8 years, some people box 10 years before they even start boxing professionally, you know, so I'm still young, I'm still learning the game and I still believe I'm an improving fighter, you know, once I start feeling like I'm on the slide, Maybe it'll be time to walk away, but at the minute I believe I don't even believe I'm at my best yet. Probably operating at 80% of what I can be, so I just want to see how far I can go and just keep improving and see what challenges are out there for me. But yeah, ain't ever going to get better than what it already has. Everything, I suppose I'm on the down. Everything now is going to be downhill, but that's unfortunately that's life, isn't it? Going back to the fight with Darren Hamilton, you were an underdog in that fight. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying no one gave you a chance, but the majority of people that were looking at the fight 
probably would have backed Hamilton, mm. uh, if I'm being honest myself. I, I did think that Darren would beat you. So, looking back on that now, it's, you know, you, you pulled out uh, the performance of your career yeah. to lift that, lift that title. So, is there a, a thing where you think, can you match it? Can, can you top it, it? Can you do it again? I don't know. I honestly don't know. They're the, your, your questions are the same that I ask myself. Um, the dedication's still there. I still get up and train like I trained for the Hamilton fight. But like I said, until I get put in that position, because listen, with three rounds to go, me against Hamilton was dead level. And it came down to who wanted it most. And I, and I wanted it more. And I dug in and I took it to him and I got him into a dog fight and he, he, he came up short. I wanted it more. Now, if we get to that same position with Willie Lim and will I react the same? And I can't answer that question honestly. Until you get there, you never know. Um, so I don't know. Willie Lemond, um, been around for a little while, yeah. and uh, looking at Willie. Older than me, I think, isn't he? Yeah, 35, how old are you? 34. Yeah. Um, Willie Lemond's record, the defeats he's had, uh, to top class opposition. I mean, yeah. I think he's lost to Alex Arthur, Amir Khan, Crawler. I can't remember who the other Morales. One. Oh, Eric Morales, of course, Eric Morales. So. You know, the defeat. Not bad yeah, them, yeah, not yeah, <laughs> not bad on the losses. You know, yeah. record. But um, what's Willie Lemon got left? Do you think? <clears throat> the thing is, Willie Lemon is where I was February twenty second. He's in the last chance saloon, so he makes him a dangerous fighter. Like I told Darren Hamilton, I had nowhere to go if I lost. I had not. I had nowhere. It was over for me. So that's I told him that's what made me dangerous. It's very similar with Willie Lemons, you know, he's he's um I think he's fought for the British title twice against Alex Arthur and Anthony Crawler and lost both times, which is obviously no shame in that, they're both top top operators. Um, but I think Willie knows that this is his last chance, he's gotta beat me, otherwise he's got nowhere to go. Exactly the same as myself. If I lose then well, I ain't got anywhere to go. So that's what make, makes this fight so good. I believe this is a genuine 50-50 fight. Whoever turns up on the night um, and boxes as well as he can will win the fight. If I'm at 80%, I'll get beat. If he's at 80%, he'll get beat. You know, so whoever turns up and, and does the business will win. But he's a good fighter. You know, he's, I think he's had over 40 fights you know, and only lost to, to them guys. Like you said, he's got a wealth of experience. Crafty counter-puncher. Knocked Amir Khan out. And the referee, don't know what was going on with the count, but slowest count I've ever seen in my life. So he's a good, good fighter. This is a tough, tough fight for me. And without blowing my own trumpet, I think I deserve quite a bit of respect for coming up to Scotland, putting my belt on the line in my first defence when there was easier options out there for me. You know, but I needed to, like I said, answer those questions that that you had and that I've got myself whether I wanted it. So I needed a fight like this to to kind of ask myself some questions because this is going to be tough. I think it'll be it'll be one of them fights where we'll probably both get halfway in thinking and enjoying this. I think it'll be that type of fight, you know. Let's see who wants it most. I think it'll be that type of fight. Um, but I think I'll grind him down and I think I'll stop him. What other options were there for you for this fight? Was Tommy Cole an option? Yeah, Tommy Cole was an option. Both teams spoke. That was probably a day away from being confirmed. Um, we got so close to having an agreement for that one in, in Hull. I got very close to being announced, um, but just fell through at the final final hurdle. Um, and then this fight got, got got offered me, and Eddie made me a fantastic offer to come up to Scotland. So here I am. Obviously, I had the uh, Bradley Saunders fight got offered. Frank Warren made it public on Twitter that he'd offered me £50,000 to fight Bradley Saunders, um, and that was an option as well. But Bradley's a Top top fighter, you know, being a great amateur and he's a good fighter, but he wasn't really bringing anything to the table. Where Willie Lemond, there's two fighters in the domestic scene that can say they're the, they're the best because of the champions. That's me and Willie Lemond. He's a Commonwealth champion. I'm a British champion. So this was the one where both belts go on the line and someone ends up with both of them. So this was a fight that really excited me. This is the one I took. Realistically, you've achieved what you set out to achieve. Yeah. In your head, how far can you go? I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. And that, that, that's why I'm still fighting. You know, I've made no secret about how my career will end. And, and that's how most fighters' careers end. They either 
flat on my back or flat on my face, but I'll, I'll keep going until I feel like I can't go any further, or I can't, I've got, you know, I can't keep competing. Who knows? You know, it, it, I nearly fought for the European title, and that was a fight that got that got spoke about as well. So, you know, I nearly made that step up and see how I got on there. But I'm kind of one of those people that I try not to put any ceiling on where I, where I aim at. I'm just gonna see what happens. If I beat Willie Lemon, then I'm British and Commonwealth champion. People have had world title fights off off the back of less than that. Um, so who knows? You know, I'm open to any <laughs> anybody. Pick up the phone. Let's. You know, I'm willing to travel anywhere, which I've proved in the past. You know, I'll fight on other rival promoters' cards if the opportunity is right for me and the fight excites me. I'm I'm ready to go. All right. Well, I didn't get Floyd Mayweather, but I did get Curtis Woodhouse. So life exactly. isn't that bad. TBE. TBE. Yeah. Yeah, TBE. Oh, are you talking about for yourself or Floyd? What do you think? I'm talk you, what, oh, I think you're talking about you. Obviously myself, yeah. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> King of the 140s. Floyd's exactly. lucky you're not at 147. Well, listen, uh, that fight has been spoke about, but, you know, my guaranteed money, I think, was about three and a half grand, and Floyd was looking at 40 million, so the figures didn't quite add up. But, uh, hey, who knows? <laughs> All right, listen, Curtis, thanks for talking nice to uh, IFL TV. Uh, press conference is going to stop hour, isn't it? about an hour away, yeah. so. Uh, We'll see uh, how that pans out. And then obviously, roll on June 27th. Yeah, I can't wait, mate. Big night. All right, thank you. Coogan Cassius, Curtis Woodhouse, IFL TV. Thank you very much.